I want to talk a little bit right now about maybe the biggest obstacle to selling a home these days, and that is where am I going to go? There's so little inventory out there, prices are so high, and even though I'm going to make a bucket full of money when I sell my house, it doesn't mean I have a good place to go. And then, and it's complicated, the interim part, right? But let's just talk about, you know, inventory's at record lows, demand is strong, and houses are selling for a lot more than their listed price and they're selling really quickly. So one of the hardest parts, like I said, is what's next? So even in a normal market, timing a, a sale and a purchase, so I'm gonna sell my house and then I'm gonna move directly into my new home, that's tricky business. It, it gets kind of crazy. Little things can put you off by a day or two days, even a week. And so, you know, when you've got the moving company scheduled and you got the utilities and you, you know, you're taking time off work, it can be a real problem. And in today's market, it's even more of a problem. So, um, and then when you add to that, the fact that if I'm selling a home and you wanna buy my home and, and you're contingent upon um, selling your home, then that makes it complicated for me because I don't know what's going on with your buyer, how good they are, how strong they are. Are you selling at a fair price? Is the appraisal going to be an issue? Is the investigation going to be an issue? Right. So the truth is right now, I mean, really, 90%, maybe more, of sellers are like, I don't want to be bothered with that. I have other buyers offering me just as much, and I don't even have to have that part of the equation. So um, that is a really important thing to consider. Now, I have had that, I've had uh, two or three just recently open up, and they were contingent on uh, the seller selling their home, and they were able to go get offers accepted because we moved really quickly. We came in, we got the appraisal right away, we did the inspection right away, and we were able to remove our contingencies. So when they went out and looked for homes, they could say, look, I know we're contingent, and that's you know something you don't want to have to deal with, but look, they've already removed their loan, their inspection. In one case, we've even removed, I mean, the appraisal inspection, and in one case, we even removed the loan. We're all ready to go. All we need is them to find a property. Well, that makes them a strong buyer. They have a ready, willing, and committed buyer already. So they went out, in fact, just today, and they got their offer accepted, so we're gonna be working on that. So the question is, you know, what do you do if you're selling a home and you're trying to find a home? Well, these days, remember, buyers are kind of desperate. So you can, you can ask the buyer, hey, give me some time to find a home. And nine times out of 10, they're gonna do that. You can say, I need 17 days, I need 30 days. We allowed 60 days uh, for this one couple and they ended up finding a home in about 10 days, I believe it was. So uh, you might need to do that. One thing, uh, another option you might have is you can do a lease back. Have the seller stay in their home. Now, in the past, in a balanced market, a buyer could say, look, I'll let you stay in your home, but you're going to have to pay your principal, interest, taxes, and insurance uh, so that it's not costing me money. Well, the truth is, these days, uh, those sellers can find someone that's probably going to eat that cost. I've heard of people going two, three months and just saying, just live there for free. As long as I can get this house when you find your place and you're ready to move out, I'll take it and I'll be happy. So um, that is, uh, is an option, but it's tricky. I mean, it's a lot of money, let's face it. For most of us, it's a lot of money. And then options for you. You know, I, have, I had one lady, she lived in a um, residence inn, you know, the little kitchen kitchenette thing and then they have the maid come and make her bed every day and leave her a chocolate. She thought it was amazing. Um, and then you can move in with friends and family. And I know nobody wants to do this. Nobody wants to move twice. Nobody wants to put stuff in storage. But hey, wait a minute. You're about to make a killing on the sale of your house. So put a little few bucks in to the cost of storage or the cost of a short-term rental and then you'll be in a great position to make an offer and buy the home that you really want. So, um, storage and then traditional. You can even move into a regular apartment or a regular house sometimes and be on a month to month if you have to. And then, you know, these days, I know of friends of ours, they're traveling all around the country. They're just driving around. And I've seen it when we went skiing. I see people that say, yeah, well, we're just going from resort to resort to resort and skiing, working from home, right? So you, there's a lot of um, opportunities and you just have to, you know, maybe be a little open-minded to some things that might seem really complicated, but you know, they don't have to be that bad. And like I said, you're gonna have a lot of money to show for it. 
And then, you know, one thing you can do, which I don't really get, is we buy ugly houses, I buyers, right? These, these uh, um, online buyers. You can do that, you know, they'll just come out, they'll give you a, num a number and they'll pay you and you know, you can take that and run. But guess what? You're not gonna get paid what you should. You should market your house to the whole world and let the best one reach out and take it. So um, buyers are gonna wait for you. So those are some tips about uh, the issue of having to buy and sell a home at the same time. I hope that was helpful.